Heating homes is heating the planet. We're emitting more and more carbon. Right now we're going in exactly the wrong direction. Three quarters of fossil fuels used in the world's buildings goes on heating. I do not believe that you just sit back and wait for something to happen. That's not good enough. In 2021, emissions grew at the fastest rate for many years. I've got a massive carbon footprint, so reducing, reusing is my vibe at the moment. So what's the best way to keep warm without warming the planet? Thirty-seven-year-old Mukwena is a businessman living in Johannesburg. His home-come office is powered by electricity from the national grid. But for the past few years, South Africa has failed to produce enough electricity, and so power cuts have become the norm. You'd get home from work, literally put the key in the door, open up, and then the power would go out. Now you can't cook, so what now? Now you can't watch a TV, you can't Zoom your friends or whatever it is. Mokwena also uses the electricity to power a hot water boiler. Currently, we can only take a shower in the morning. So if I go out for a jog somewhere or go hiking or whatever it is, I'd have to get back home, switch on the water heater, wait 20 minutes, draw electricity just so I can have a shower. This uncertainty around power has pushed Mokwena to consider going off grid and disconnect entirely from the national electricity supply and he has a personal motivation for doing this too. I have a background in motor sales. One of my biggest motivations is basically just trying to undo all the V8s that I've sold. I've got a massive carbon footprint. I'm trying to just live a more sustainable existence, just trying to do my bit. In 2020, only 7.6% of South Africa's electricity came from renewable sources, and almost 90% came from coal. Mokwena is keen to find a more sustainable solution, so he's no longer adding to his country's carbon footprint. So I came across basically two ways to heat the water. It's either through gas or through solar. Gas is still a fossil fuel at the end of the day to get gas is still not a sustainable way to live. So solar seems the easiest, most sustainable option to solve your water heating problems. In a country which averages 2,500 hours of sunshine a year, that makes a lot of sense. But gloomier skies call for more inventive solutions. 5,000 pounds to scrap your old boiler and make your home greener with a heat pump. In Britain, the government is wrestling with the same challenge as Mokwena of heating homes without burning fossil fuels. Green is good. Green is right. Green works. Britain uses more energy for heating than to power the electricity grid or run its transport system, and 70% of it comes from burning natural gas, producing more than a quarter of the country's CO2 emissions. Part of the strategy is to try to get us all eventually doing this, having heat pumps that don't use fossil fuels installed in place of gas boilers. No one is being told to rip out their boiler, let's be clear about that. Angela had to cover the initial cost of her heat pump. Heat pump. Heat pump. Heat pumps. Heat pump. Heat pump. Heat pump. Heat pump. Heat pumps. Heat pump. Heat pumps. So what is a heat pump? A heat pump is a bit like a refrigerator, but doing the opposite. Because in your refrigerator at home, you're extracting the, the, the warmth from inside the fridge and you're pumping it outside. So you'll notice that there's a little bit of warm air around the outside of your refrigerator. A heat pump does exactly the same thing. It sucks out small amounts of heat from the air around your house and it concentrates it and pumps it into your house to make you warm. So it's a really efficient way of extracting what is essentially free heat from the world around you, concentrating it and bring it into your home. This is Max Fordham, a pioneer of sustainable design and environmentally friendly engineering. Today, his company is a leading voice in the push towards low energy buildings with low or net zero carbon emissions. And this is one of its latest projects, transforming Oxford University's Wolfson College with a heat pump powered heating system. Senior partner Bill Watts 
has the job of bringing the vision to life. Oh, somehow, there you go. <laughs> the heat pump, it's an air source heat pump. There are four of them. They're about five meters long, um, that high. And they're going to be sitting here. Four big fans, one, two, three, four. Uh, sucking air in at the back and then blowing it out that way. And this basement is about to become the engine room for Bill's mission to reduce the carbon footprint of the college. These are the boilers that heat the building currently. We've got about 2,500 kilowatts of boiler power and we're replacing it with 750 kilowatts of heat pump. We're confident that we've dropped the amount of heat loss of the building so we can reduce the size of the heating system by a, to a third of what it is. Nearly 20 million heat pumps were sold worldwide in 2019, a number that needs to triple if climate targets are to be reached. But those targets are also dependent on a more traditional approach to keeping buildings warm. OK, so this is a new window. We've got the triple, triple glazing. The insulation of this glass is a factor of 10 better compared to single glazing. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. It's exciting stuff for an environmental engineer. His clients, on the other hand, are likely to be more excited by the 80% cut in the college's energy bills that this extra insulation is going to help deliver. Take out the old window, put the damp proof member in down, put in a new window, foam it up, seal it up, and then insulate around. That's basically it. Back in South Africa, Mokwena has reached similar conclusions to Bill Watts. So for insulation in the ceiling, I would put pink foam to help insulate. In the South African context, that's to keep the heat out more than to keep it in. Then definitely change the windows. But everyday consumers like Mokwena don't have the deep pockets of an Oxford University college. Cost is a problem. When it comes to double glazed glass, it just means remodeling again, and it's, it's a huge cost. What we're doing is we're asking the government to insulate all the UK homes. In Britain, insulation and its sometimes prohibitive cost has become a surprisingly hot topic. There is nothing more important than insulating people's homes and making a start on cutting the emissions. But poor insulation isn't the only obstacle facing heat pump advocates. Up to 13 million homes in the UK that currently use natural gas for heating will not be suitable for a heat pump. Many because they simply wouldn't have space. Little surprise then, the energy with which other carbon-free heating solutions are being pursued. From solar to wood-burning biomass boilers to one potential fuel of the future still trying to escape its past. The Hindenburg's 7 million cubic feet of hydrogen gas had ignited. This historic disaster hung over public attitudes to hydrogen use for decades, even though it wasn't the gas that caused the explosion. The reflexive fear of hydrogen even has a name, the Hindenburg syndrome. But that's begun to change. From food to medicine. This machine could change all that. Hydrogen has been used for years in industry and is now a potential clean fuel of the future for trucks, for planes, ships and trains. So why not houses too? Here in a quiet corner of Northern England, hydrogen is being domesticated. This unassuming house runs on 100% hydrogen for domestic heating and cooking. Since 2016, we have been looking at ways in which the existing infrastructure of 280,000 kilometers of distribution pipe work could be repurposed using a carbon-free method of heating and cooking. The idea was to demonstrate that hydrogen is a plausible way forward in reducing the carbon emissions in the UK. In this test project, there are no direct carbon emissions at all but the hydrogen fuel itself needs to be produced, a process which requires a lot of electricity and is currently done using fossil fuels. So its backers are on the lookout for sustainable sources that might just be going spare. When you've got low demand for electricity, 
they actually stop the wind turbines running because they don't need them. Whereas they could actually run them and that could generate the green electricity to produce hydrogen. Northern Gas hopes to have hydrogen in UK homes by the end of the decade. And if hydrogen can be produced using sustainable energy, then it can be a truly green fuel. But that's a big if. The climate crisis, my friends, is the test of our times. If heating homes is to stop heating the planet, government and industry will need to work together to bring green energy solutions to a tipping point. By saying the industry will provide and make it all nice and cheap is true, but they need certainty that that is going to happen. The levers of state need to be brought to bear and say, this particular fuel source is going to be banned by this date and then everybody gets behind it. And only government can do that. And for the millions like Mo who want to do the right thing and go green, they need support now to make their journey to a green future possible. That migration from grid energy to renewable energy, it's not as achievable as I'd like it to be. It's not so easy to get there, but we try. I'm John Fassman, The Economist's U.S. Digital Editor. To keep up with all our climate change coverage, click the link. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.